Gorgeous, I am reviving an old series I did years ago that I wanted to pick up again. So when I asked recently what you wanted to see in a battle of, the resounding majority of you said concealers. So I have put 10 drugstore concealers to the test. In this video, I'm going to be showing you up close wear tests with each of these, the pros and cons with each of them, and then I'll also share the best and the worst at the end so you can make an informed decision. Let's first talk about the Physician's Formula Butter Concealer. This was oddly reminiscent to me of the Urban Decay Naked Quickie because it has a doe foot applicator for application, but on the top, it has a sponge for buffing the concealer in after the application. Now this one is more yellow based. You'll probably pick up on that as I'm applying it here. It does contain fragrance. So if you do not like scents in your makeup products, please be aware that you can smell this one. This has a very pigmented formula. Unfortunately, I applied a little bit too much in the up close example I'm showing you here. So I did wipe some of that away during the application, but nonetheless, great coverage with this one. But one of the things I noticed is that it takes a little bit of time to evenly blend it underneath the eye. Beautiful initial application, looked great underneath the eyes, but how did it hold up throughout the day? This is what my under eye area looked like after nine hours of wear. No movement, no creasing, everything remained intact. And despite the formula being a little harder to blend than most of the other concealers that I'll be sharing with you in this video, it still looked great at the end of the day. Moving on to Catrice Cosmetics True Skin High Cover Concealer. This contains hyaluronic acid and it is labeled as being waterproof. It also claims to go 18 hours. It's very pigmented. Very little amount is all you need when you are applying this concealer and the coverage is astoundingly beautiful. Very easy to blend. It's one of the more hydrating formulas that I'll be sharing with you in today's video. So it's excellent for those with dry skin or with more mature skin. It feels amazing. It looks amazing. And the coverage again, I'm going to say it again because I have to, it's beautiful. And after wearing this for nine hours, this is what my under eye area looks like at the end of the day. You can see there's no movement, no creasing, everything held up. And the additional thing that I'll add about this concealer is I put it through a swim test. I think it was last year and it does hold up to swimming. So it is waterproof. That waterproof claim is absolutely true. The 18 hour claim is true. Even though I didn't wear it for 18 hours in the wear test I'm showing you here, I have worn it for upwards of 15, 16 hours before with the same amazing results that you're seeing there after nine hours. So it's a really excellent formula. Next one I have to share with you is Milani's Conceal and Perfect Long Wear Concealer. This has amazing coverage, but one of the things I noticed about it is that it has a little bit of a drier formula compared to all the other concealers I'm sharing with you in this video. And in that sense, it was one that you had to work really fast with, I noticed, because it dried fast. And if you didn't blend it in time, it was a booger and a half to get it to blend after that. And because of the quick dry time, it was one that I felt like I had to buff into the skin after the initial application with a brush. And even though the results are beautiful, this was an application I didn't really enjoy doing. It stressed me out. But I'm very happy to tell you that even despite that, after wearing it for a straight eight hours and looking at my under eyes here, you can see there was no movement, no creasing. Everything did remain intact and the coverage did last throughout the day. A new concealer that I had not tried before testing for this video comes from Essence and that's the Keep Me Covered Concealer. This contains aloe vera. There's no fragrance, no silicones, no added mineral oil, and they label it as vegan. This has medium coverage, excellent application. You can see it here. It's so easy to blend in and an amazing price point with this one. One of the best price points of all the concealers I'm sharing with you today. Now, this is one that I figured would be really good because of the addition of aloe vera. Aloe vera is a plant that you can use as a makeup primer. It works just as well as the primers that you buy in the store. I'm gonna be doing a video on that shortly. But the initial application was beautiful and I was so impressed with this one and hopeful that it would last throughout the day. And after wearing this for eight hours on the day that I tested it, this is what it looked like under my eyes. No movement, no creasing. It looked gorgeous. I was so excited to see this. 
And in the times that I've worn it since conducting that wear test, I've had the same consistently great results with this one too. So it has become one of my favorites of the bunch that I'm sharing here today. CoverGirl Outlast Extreme Wear Concealer. This is one that is full coverage. It promises 24 hour wear. And when they say full coverage, they mean full coverage. You can see it here. Look at this pigment. It is pigment plus, 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 plus. <laughs> so when I say you need a very small amount, I mean it. I mean a tiny, tiny, tiny amount. One thing I noticed though with this is that it does settle into fine lines and it has a tendency to overemphasize things that we want to hide, especially on the under eye area. If you apply a very small amount, it does help to lessen that quality of the concealer, but it still does bring it out. And the coverage was pretty good with this one at first. I thought, wow, okay, here we go, cover girl. After wearing it for eight hours, it wore okay. There wasn't any creasing, but it could be better in my opinion from the application standpoint. While there was no movement in the initial application, it was so thick, the formula was so thick that it was, I felt like it was hard to apply and it was hard to blend. And it was another one that just was more stress than not to get it to apply. And it's one that you could apply too much of and then end up with creasing movement and all that, and then really end up hating it. So the amount you apply with this one will determine whether or not it wears well on you. For me, it was just too much work and it wasn't my favorite. Next is Bear With Me Concealer Serum. This is one of the ones that was the most highly requested by so many of you to be included in this video. By the way, a lot of you did pick the concealers that I'm showcasing here today. So thank you so much for your feedback and input. This one is very pigmented. I've been using this concealer for quite a while, so I already knew what to expect with it. And so many of you already love it. You know why you love it. A little bit goes a long way. It's very easy to get into the skin and it's hydrating. You can feel the hydration in the formula as you are applying it. And this is another one that if you apply too much of it, you can get creasing with it. So a little bit of the formula goes a long way. On the day that I was testing this one, I do feel like I applied too much of it. <laughs> I could have applied a little bit less if we're being honest and frank here, because after nine hours, if you look at my under eye area, you can see a small amount of creasing, but I'm telling you that on the days when I am very careful with how much I apply, it does increase and it wears extremely well. And I've not had any issues with this one. Still one I'm going to continue using and still one that I do really enjoy. Another one I have to share with you is the Wet n Wild Mega Last Incognito Concealer. This one goes on easily, no issues with blending. A little bit again goes a long way with this one because it's a very pigmented formula. The coverage is beautiful and it is full coverage. They claim that it lasts all day. They claim that it's going to hang in there and you're not going to have any issues with it. I've never had success with this concealer. I just haven't. It does not wear well on me. And after wearing it for a total of nine hours, you can see that very clearly here. There was a lot of creasing and a lot of separation. And it really doesn't matter with the amount of concealer I apply under the eye. Even if it's a very small amount, I still have creasing and issues with separation. So not my favorite. ELF's Hydrating Camo Concealer. This is one that was very highly requested by all of you to be included in this video also, and one that I hadn't tried before putting this video together. This has a satin finish to it, so it's not fully matte like the other ELF Camo Concealer that they originally released, and the pigment is like the original Camo Concealer. Very, very high level of pigment with this one. So a little bit goes a long way. It is very moisturizing. You can feel that as you're applying it. The formula is really nice, smooth, and the final results look amazing with this one. And I was very impressed after the initial application. After wearing it for eight hours, this was my personal experience with it. It looked pretty good from a, you know, overall looking at the concealer, but when you look to the inner corner area, there was a little bit of separation that I noticed. Now it's not enough to say, whoa, you should never try this concealer. I would give this one another chance and it could just be user error on my part. Maybe I applied too much that day, but overall, despite that little hiccup that I saw, this was 
pretty darn good. Revlon's Skin Awaken Concealer. This is a five-in-one concealer, so it has five different qualities to it. They claim that it erases, perfects, brightens, hydrates, and refreshes, and they also have a 24-hour claim sticker on the bottle. I really appreciate the applicator tip with this one because it prevents you from applying way too much, unlike some of these other concealers with the doe foot applicator that doesn't really keep you from applying too much. The formula instantly corrects all the issues underneath the eyes. It is yellow based. So if you have purple under eye circles, this is an excellent one to try. And after wearing it for nine hours, everything remained intact. There was no creasing. The coverage was just as beautiful from beginning to end. It's one of my favorite concealers that I also have used as contour. I, I buy a little bit of a deeper shade and I use it as contour and it works beautifully like that too. And the final concealer I have to share with you is from Revolution Beauty. I haven't used anything from them in so long. I tested out their Conceal and Define Full Coverage Concealer and you supposedly you can also use this one as a contour. It applies without much difficulty. It's pretty easy to blend underneath the eye, but they label it as full coverage. I didn't feel like I got that. It, this was my least favorite in terms of coverage. And I don't feel like my under eye area looked astoundingly beautiful after having used this concealer. And after wearing it for eight hours, it got worse and worse and worse. It didn't hold up either. It looked really terrible at the end of the day. There was creasing and it did start to break apart underneath my eye and it was not one of the best of the bunch. Out of all the concealers I tested for you here today, really hard to pick a top three, but I narrowed it down and I would highly recommend any one of these three to you. The Essence Keep Me Covered Concealer, the Catrice True Skin Concealer, or the e.l.f. Camo Hydrating Concealer, followed closely by the NYX Bear With Me Concealer. Okay, let's just put it out there. But the worst of the bunch, the worst three that I would not recommend looking into would be the Wet n Wild Incognito, Revolution Beauty's Conceal and Defined, and the Milani Conceal and Perfect. But as always, makeup is a very personal experience. I always say, take my opinion with a grain of salt, try things for yourself. I'm only here to share my experiences with these products and give you up close looks at how they perform and how they apply so that you can make a better informed decision for yourself. Let me know your thoughts. Which one of these is your favorite? If you have one that I did not mention that is your favorite, feel free to share that as well. And let me know what products you want to see featured next in a battle of video like this. I heard foundations recently and mascaras. So let me know your top choices. Thank you for being here. And if you enjoyed today's video, please give it a thumbs up so that YouTube knows, hey, she's doing something good over there. And if you want to be notified of more videos like this in the future, you're always welcome to subscribe. I speak love, peace, and joy into you and into your home. And I look forward to seeing you again next time. A brush or a sponge after the nipple, a nipple, a nipple, the nipple application. Mm -hmm.